Okay. So yesterday we did uh, what did we do? We did domain and range uh, using man, I'm spacing out using intervals. Okay. So just a refresher. So here's our graph. We say our x value, our domain. We want to know where does it fall in between. Right? It's our simplest, simplest setup. So I say, where is going from left to right? What is the furthest point to the left? And we'd say it's anywhere, it's anywhere over here where x is negative three. So we put that on our left hand side. So we said negative three is less than or equal to x. And then we did the same thing on the other side. And since there is an arrow, it goes on forever to the right. We say this goes out towards positive, positive infinity. Okay. And we could also rewrite this as x is just greater than or equal to negative three, but we can put it like this because it's still sort of new to us. Okay, so what we're adding today is instead of just looking at uh, looking at oh my goodness, instead of just looking at inequalities, <laughs> we want to look at set notation, which is the same thing. We're just going to add a little bit more uh, stuff to it. So all we do is we put curly braces, and then I'm going to put x, and then I'm going to put this line, which is the same line as you were doing absolute value, but it's not absolute value. It's just, just a vertical line. And then we put our curly braces on the other side. And then that's, that's our new answer. That's how we write this in set notation. And if we want to read this, right, the curly braces tell us that's a set of numbers. And then this X over here means it's a set of all values of X. And then this little bar, this pipe here, it just means the word such that, right? So we'd say set of all values of X such that, and then whatever's on the right-hand side. So in this case, uh, X is between negative three and positive infinity, okay? And you get more into set notation as you get further in math. For now, we're just trying to get you familiar. So that way, if you see something written like this, you don't freak out. You realize that the key information is still right here. And then this stuff is just kind of extra, right? So you've seen it before. You don't freak out when you see X, X and then a bar there, okay? Uh, so if we do range, same thing. So we still look at it the same way, except range is your Y values. So I say, what is my point furthest down? And that is that also negative three, right? Equals that, because there's definitely a point there. And then it goes up to somewhere on this line here. And anywhere up there, y equals, equals four, right? So we say a range is somewhere between negative three and positive four. And then to put this in, uh, in set notation, we do the same thing. I mean, instead of putting an X, we just put Y. And then we close it off. And then that becomes our domain and range using, using set notation. Okay, not too bad. And then just so I don't have to go and re-explain all of this one more time, we're also gonna look at, let me do this, let me take this and just make it, a little smaller. Take this one, make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so that's set notation. There's one more way to write this, which is interval notation. Just actually, it's a little bit, a little bit easier. So interval notation, not yeah, yeah, interval. We skip all of these inequality signs. And we write it sort of like you're looking at just an ordered pair, right? Because we're always going to have, have two key uh, numbers or infinity, right? So when we talk about our domain, we're going to say negative three, comma, positive infinity, right? And that's mostly it, right? You take your two key points. There's always a key of minimum, maximum. Put a comma between them. And then we just need to, to mark it off here. So if, if our sign was less than or equal to, we put a bracket, 
right? And this tells us that it includes that point negative three. If it's infinity or negative infinity, or it doesn't equal that, it just approaches it, we use parentheses instead. And then that's our answer. So we say the domain is all the values between negative three and positive infinity. Okay. And for our range, same thing so between negative three, comma, four. Since it can equal negative three or four, we're going to put a bracket on either side. And that is interval notation. That's this one, this one. And then we also did, in case you're just getting here, set notation. And that is. Here. So it's just different ways of showing the exact same thing. So that way, if you're taking like a PSAT test at some point and you see one of these, you recognize what they're talking about. Okay, it's just a range of possible values. Right, let's try, let's try one more. So this one, let's come up a couple times. So just a horizontal line going in one direction forever. So we say domain, domain with an I in it. So my point furthest to the left is over here at negative two. So we'd say, oops, negative, <laughs> ah, negative two, and it equals that. So less than or equal to x, less than. And then we see on the right-hand side, it goes on forever. So this would be positive infinity, right? So that's inequality. We can put this into to set notation by just doing curly braces, x, y, curly brace on the other side. So set of all values of x such that x is between negative two and positive infinity. If you want to do interval notation, we'd say our domain is just between negative two and positive infinity, right? It can equal negative two, so I put a bracket. It approaches infinity, so I put a, a set of parentheses. There you go, there's two different ways to write the same thing. Okay, for our range, this one's a little bit special, and that's since it's horizontal, our y value is always the same. It's always at negative one, right? So we would say y equals negative one. So to put that into set notation, nothing actually changes. Uh, it's just a uh, set of all numbers, y such that y equals negative one, okay? And for interval notation, it's not actually an interval. An interval means like a range of values. But since this one is just one number, if you wanted to put this into interval notation, and really, we should put this in like quotation marks because it's not really, because it's only one number. Your answer, you would just put y equals negative one and be done with it. So range is y equals negative one. Okay, so that's a special case where the domain and range is just a single number. There's not a whole lot you can do. So we just put it equals that number for set notation along with the extra stuff. Interval notation, you just write down y equals uh, that value. So that's it. It just takes some practice. Hopefully you're getting familiar with it. If not, come back and ask some questions. We'll help you out. All right. Bye.